in order to learn hard, you gotta learn soft. Because if you say you know hard, you have nothing to compare it to. And if you say you know soft, but you never train hard, in order to know hard, you gotta know soft. Hello there. It's time for another great episode of Martial Arts Radio, the show that brings you amazing stories from the world's best martial artists. Today, we're talking to Kyoshi Jose Di Macali as we bring you episode 134. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear, and here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the web's best podcast on the traditional martial arts twice a week. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm the host and founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to those of you checking us out for the first time. Today's featured product is our pullover sweatshirt. Available in five colors, these cotton blend hoodies hold up amazingly well, and they keep you cozy, whether it's a bit chilly at your house or maybe to help you warm up before you start your training. You can find them at whistlekick.com. If you want the show notes, including links to everything we talk about today with Kyoshi Dimakali, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're not on the newsletter list, why not? Now's a great time. We send out exclusive content. It's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. And as a thank you, we'll send you our top 10 tips for martial artists, an exclusive podcast episode that will never show up in our feed. Sign up for the newsletter at whistlekick.com or whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I first met our guest, Kyoshi Jose Di Macali, in 2015 at the Twin State Martial Arts Championships. It's a Vermont, New Hampshire circuit. We were still offering the 60-second push-up challenge at the Whistle Kick booth, and Kyoshi was encouraged to participate by his instructor, the man that had been dominating that competition for, with us pretty much since we started it, Hanchi Richard Bernard. He absolutely crushed the score that day, performing 74 push-ups in a minute. And these were solid push-ups. I verified them myself, and it was one of the few times that Hanchi Bernard actually didn't win for the day. However... That was not the first time I'd heard of Kyoshi. People on the tournament circuit spoke very highly of his skill and his dominance when it came to his forms performances. Over the next year, I had the opportunity to speak with him several times, and I realized that not only is Kyoshi Di Macali an excellent competitor, but an excellent martial artist, as well as a great person. Today's episode solidifies my opinions of him as he tells us an emotional tale of martial arts, family, and motivation. I hope you enjoy it. Kyoshi Di Macali, welcome to Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Hello, thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course, thank you. It's going to be a pleasure to have you. Get to learn more about you. And, you know, I know you just a little bit, right? You know, just just the tiniest little bit, and and of course, you know, can ask you a bunch of questions and take the listeners on a ride as as we all learn about who you are. So let's start. Yeah, the best place to start. It's a martial arts podcast. We talk about martial arts. How did you get started in martial arts? Yeah, I I got started when I was uh, around five years old, like 1977, I think. Yeah, in Honolulu, Hawaii, I studied uh, with um, uh, GIKC, Japan International Karate Center. And uh, my instructor was Kiyohisa Hirano. He was, uh, Hisa was Wadaru. And I was very fortunate that time because... Uh, he, his instructor was uh, the founder of Wadaru, uh, Sensei Otsuka. So I was like, oh, wow. Uh, so it was, I was very fortunate to find him. Wow. So you started at five. So what was it that got you interested or did your parents want you to start training? How, how did that all come about? Yeah, it was, you know, mostly... Same with everybody, you know, uh, the parents, you know, make this, their kid try karate. But uh, we just came from Philippines uh, to Hawaii. So we're just brand new from, to, uh, from Philippines to Hawaii to America. So, and we lived in the projects. So my mother and father wanted us to stay away from, you know, bad stuff. Mm. So we ended up in learning karate. So obviously, at some point, you became old enough to make the decision for yourself, and you're still training. So have you been training yeah. continuously all that time? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I did. And then the only break I had was, I think, out of all that years, I think I had only one one year, one year break uh, from my training. That was probably around my um my uh, when I was eighth grade, around seventh or eighth grade, one year. Wow. I was back in Philippines. Then I came back uh, the next following year, and then I, I I miss it. You know, it's you do that so long, it's like a part of you missing. So I just and that was my safe haven. So I trained some more, and I'm back till now. Yeah. How long did you live in Hawaii? I lived. I that's where I grew up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I grew up over there. Um, yeah, that's why my English like this. They, you know, pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand you just fine. So. Yes. So. Yeah. We, one of the things that we've heard from a number of guests on the show is the martial arts culture on Hawaii is different mm-hmm. because it's such a, a cultural melting pot to to borrow the cliche. Yeah. You know, there are yeah. so many people that come from from China, from the Philippines, from Japan mm-hmm. and end up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. But, what was it yeah. like training in the martial arts there? And you know, of course now you have training on the mainland to compare it to. How is that mm-hmm. different? Oh, uh, you know what? You just you just read my mind like because in Hawaii, you know, when you go to a karate dojo, in my time, it's, you're going to learn from Japanese. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Then when you go to a, a taekwondo dojo or dojang, you, you go in there, you're going to get, a, you know, a Korean person. And of course, wusu, you, you're going to get Chinese. But uh, then when you come over here, um, in the mainland, you know, uh, everybody learning it. It, it. It's I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'd say you know what I had to like relearn mentality wise. I'm a mentor, like you know, uh, I cannot always think when I go into the a dojo, I'm gonna find like this, you know, like in Hawaii, you know. But I tell you what, the the way the training over there in Hawaii that time especially when i was growing up it was it was really different it's like you 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 better do what your instructors say you know i remember that time when uh i told my instructor uh they told me like uh, you're gonna train hard today i just said i guess so oh he he just got he he told me go home really and yeah he told me go home i don't i don't like cry baby and and I was like, oh my gosh, you do that here now? Oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get sued. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it's it's a di- it's so different now, and I understand why. You know, you 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 know. Um, but sometimes my mentality, I tell my students now, you know, like you know, the 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 mentality is still there, but the the physical, I gotta uh, adjust a little bit, you know, because. You know, but it's, it's, it's like that. I don't know. It's, you had to, I guess, be there to, in the situation to understand like how the, how the dynamics is, is, yeah, it is different. Mm. It's really different. Yeah. So did but you I s- learn a lot here too, you know, in the mainland yeah. because the way they accept and the way they, um, I really like when they cross train because it really does help. I don't know. Uh, I I'm one to be in the first line on that. Uh, the the way they cross train in uh, in the martial arts is like it's it's crazy and it's it's good. It's it's evolving, you know. So tell me more what you mean about that cross training. Cross training, like uh, you know, like let's say um, for me uh, for karate, traditional karate, I'm you know striker, you know strikers and every, uh, but you know two parts of, of it I'm going to tell you one is uh, let's say you know what if we go on the ground like people they learn grappling now you know yeah. what I mean Yeah. so they like cross training because they, they, they 
they want to feed uh, their insecurities, you could say, as a martial artist. Like, okay, if I get hit on the ground, what are I going to do? Uh, I get on the ground, what are I going to do now, you know? But my instructor also tell me, too, like, you know, what you do standing up, you could also do on the ground. You could kick on you could punch on the you could do, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's so much here in America, you got plenty of choices. You know, back where I come from, you you, you only have little bit of choices. Mm. You know, but you know, here you got so, so much choices. And the other cross training I'm talking about is like, it's so evolved. It's, it's like, okay, you, the karate practitioner now, they're, I, I hope I'm not going to offend anybody, but <laughs> they are way better than before. Really? How, 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 how you say that? Because if you go YouTube and you look at the old people doing kata, and you go look at now the new people doing kata. Oh, they way you know they way better because you know what they do for how you get stronger. They do cross training like plyometrics. They do strength training. They do all of that to enhance their art. So they you know they learn from the past and they educate themselves to the future. Look what happened. It's the art is is more beautiful now. You know, we've had quite a few people on the show with ties to, let's say, the old school, you know, training in the 60s. Yeah. And they always speak very um, positively, memorably of their time mm -hmm. training back then. I think you're the first person we've had on the show who would say there's something better now versus then. And, and obviously, you know, we don't talk about it in this way on the show. You know, we don't try to make mm -hmm. divisions or, or, or anything. Yeah, right, right. But I think you're right. I'd never considered it before because now we have the ability to look back at what others used to do and learn from them and get better. Yeah. And you, and you can yeah. still do mm -hmm. that and honor your art. You can still lift weights and be a, a very traditional karateka or judoka or, or taekwondo yeah, practitioner. Yeah, because look at that. Like, I mean, it. you know, if you go look at the videos on YouTube, YouTube is uh, so incredible now. You, I mean, I go crazy over YouTube now. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, and I'm not that, you know, uh, uh, techie kind, how you say, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I do. Look at the, go to, like, let's say, traditional karate. Uh Go look at WKF tournaments, mm -hmm. and then go look at the uh, same kata they doing back then. I mean, you you can see the difference. You know what I mean? The only difference I can see that I'm um, really strong back then versus now I can see is their kumite, of course. They're more physical back then because they don't hold back back then. Right. You know, for kumite. But for the technique, oh, I think I, I know I'm going to get some, you know, praises and, and, and haters, but you know, that's normal in life. But you know what? I would be the first person to say, you know what? They, for the open-minded, they, they grew. The technique, they grew. Completely agree. I think that's a wonderful introduction to who you are and the way that you view martial arts. And I know that there's a lot more that we're getting. You're welcome. I know there's a lot more we're going to dig into. And, you know, it's all about stories. I, I, I love yeah. hearing a good story. And I'm guessing that you've got some great ones with you know, just where you started. I mean, anybody who grew up in the projects and started martial arts because of that. There's got to be some stories in there. So why don't you tell us your best martial arts story? Yeah, my story is, you know, like I said, you know, we live in the project. We didn't have much, you know, we didn't, we didn't have much, especially my mom, uh, uh, you know, that time they said once we in uh, Hawaii, like a year or so, a couple of years, they, they end up splitting. So it was hard. Mm. You know, uh, 
a mother with two sons trying to afford stuff. You know, it's it's hard. So I remember we did some training in the house. Um, you know, uh, people had like punching bag everything. We never we never had that. We didn't have the. We weren't fortunate to have that kind of stuff. So we end up using, we grab a chair, we put it on the wall, we get our rice bag, and we start doing Mawashi Yeri Ranhas kick. Me and my brother, me and him, we just using the rice bag, and we had to use what we got, you know, and we got to make do. And what we got, that's not going to stop us from training, you know. So we're over there, and every time I hit the rice bag, I just remember, like, you know, and I'm looking at my brother and everything. I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to better myself. For that young age, I'm saying, uh, you know what, I'm going to better myself. I'm going to get I'm gonna get a punching bag. I only wanted a punching bag, you know. And then, lo and behold, look at that. I, I, I got more than one punching bag now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then... Later on, my uh, my instructor found out, like, you know, we couldn't afford, growing up, we couldn't afford the training anymore. And, uh, you know, my mother and my uh, instructor saw it was like, it's, it was killing me because that's, that's my, like I said, that was like my safe haven after that, after uh, school, I go straight to the dojo. But my brother never lasts that long. But only me, I I last long over there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we started. uh, So my instructor said, okay, I tell you what, you cannot afford. And this was like in uh, middle school, I think around um, uh, eighth grade after I came back from uh, one year break, uh, because we couldn't afford to. Um, uh, My instructor said, I tell you what, you can help me teach. And then you can just train. And I was oh, okay. So especially summertime, I used to go to all over the island. I help teach, and my instructor just bring me all around the island and teach. And then next thing you know, uh, every morning, especially summer, we don't have school, of course. Uh, every morning, like uh, six thirty, I think uh, I end up in the dojo. Uh, I see all of the other instructor. Um, training and I was part of it too. And I said, Oh, wow, this is different now. Uh, I felt different now, not just any other student anymore, because all of the instructor is training and I'm part of it. You know, so um, that was a, that time that was an eye opener for me, like uh, uh, martial art is starting to change in my life already. Wow. Yeah. I can only imagine what it was like to be that passionate about martial arts. I I enjoyed martial arts when I was mm-hmm. younger, but not at the level that you did. And and to have that taken out of my life for a year. I I can only imagine what that what that did to you. And so your your joy coming back in and finding a way and finding even a, a deeper integration into it and teaching and having that respect from your instructor. I mean, that must have been such a positive experience. Yeah. It, it was, I mean, it was for me. It was a very, uh, sometimes I question myself too. Like, why, why you let me go for free? You know, uh, why you choose me? You know, so all of that uh, uh, questions and, um, like, I don't know, I, you could call it, I guess I could call it like uh, insecurities in, in, in thinking like that, you know? So the only way I can say thank you to him is I got to do my best, you know? Yeah. When you're not training, do you have any hobbies? We know how passionate yeah. you are about martial arts, but is there anything else? Is there time <laughs> for anything else? I, I I tell you what, um, when I'm not training, I, I like I say I go YouTube, right? <laughs> and then I look at I look at other people training, but 
you know, I sneak in that time. But most of all, I, I spend time with my family. Uh, we go out, have family time, you know, uh, and, you know, watch movie, you know, some something to do with the family because, you know what, that's, a, what, that's one thing that really uh, keep me going. You know, your family, and they support you, especially in, in your karate. So, you know, that's, that's the one keep me going. Uh, uh, every step I do in karate, it's, it's for them too. You know, so. Uh, and they train as well. Yeah, yeah, they train as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes they say, uh, you know, you know, my son, daddy, we, we, he called me dada, you know, dada, we, I want to be just like you, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, just to hear your son say that, and you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's touching, you know, but it's a lot to, you know, uh, it's a lot to take, you know, especially your father, like, oh my gosh, I got a, uh, my son tell me uh, he want to be like me. So, so my, the example I got to do is, you know, not only as a father, but as a, his instructor is, is you know, I got to do extra good, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. But I think the beauty in that is that you're also setting a good example for all of the other students, you know, whether they're older or younger whether they're boys or yeah, girls exactly. yeah. in your dojo, you know, they're looking yeah. to you. And, and I mean, I don't think there's anybody out there that hasn't looked at their martial arts instructor as at least partially a role model at some point. You know, unfortunately some people end up with instructors that aren't worthy of being role models, but I look back mm -hmm. on my time and, and you know, the, the husband and wife that ran the school that I started training at. I mean, other than my mother, you know, it was the two mm -hmm. of them that shaped my life. You know, so yeah. I, I, I know, I know what that's like. Yeah, because I tell, I tell my students that, you know, you know what, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not your friend. And they look at me like, oh, you're a mean guy. I don't want to train with you. I go, I tell them I'm not your friend. And, and I sit with the, the, with the parents and the, and the kids. And even the parents, sometimes they go like, oh, they look at me like I'm crazy. Go, I'm not your friend. I say, I'm better than your friend. I'm your instructor. Because friends, sometimes they steer you wrong way. Instructor, they're going to try bring you to the right path, you know. And then, oh, okay. So actually, I'm better than a friend, I tell them. <laughs> then I smile. <laughs> you know, make better. I smile after. I like that. I don't think I've ever heard that, but I may steal it. Yeah, go. <laughs> you know, yeah, go. Go ahead. You know, it's for everybody. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'd like you to tell us about a time in your life where things were difficult and how your experience and your training in the martial arts helped you get get past it or get through it. Oh, this is a... Um... This is where uh, take your time. This is why I'm, I'm I'm passionate for what I do. Uh, okay, uh, because growing up, when my father and my mother split. Um, I was some, sometimes, you know, you know, kids blame themselves and they said, maybe I'm the cause, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why I always go to the dojo. Uh, that was my, like I said, was my safe haven. That's where, uh, I let out everything. I let, oh, if you see me, I let out everything. Uh, and then from there, um, they had an in-house tournament. So I said, I'm going to try. 
and then next thing you know, I got I got first. I got first place. So I go to my dad and I said, Dad, I got first place. He he said nothing. He didn't say nothing. So next thing you know, I go, or oh, let me get one in the uh for the uh not in house tournament, this time get state championship. So that time I got state championship. And then I went to my dad and I said to him, Dad, look, I got state championship. He didn't say nothing, he just blew me off. And then next thing you know, I, w- I went for nationals. I said, no, I'm going to be the best in the United States. I'm going to show him. So, you know, and I'm going to show my dad. Next thing you know, he didn't say nothing. Okay. Uh, take note. I was, uh, I was like adult already. So from a little kid all the way to adult, I'm trying to praise my father doing what I love, my passion. And then 2015, <clears throat> look at that, 2015, and you figure how old I am already. I said, no, I'm going to try for world championship. Then he's then he's gonna say, you know, I'm proud of you, son. Good job. That's all what I wanted. I think that time to just get my father acceptance. Yeah. Doing my passion, what I love to do. Next thing you know, the time I want. The time I want my title. When I'm in the podium, he died already. Mm-hmm. So for me, I got to think, if he never said, if he said long time ago, I'm proud of you, I would have not made the world champion. I got to think like that. You know, when they say, uh, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Heck, I, I, I own my own company, Lemonade Company Array. You know, I made it all the way to world champion. Because I, I figure in life, if I tell them, if, if I heard from my father, oh, I'm proud of you. I think I would have not achieved higher. I got to think like that. And for me, I think that's what uh, karate taught me. You know, uh, you know, you when difficult time, you gotta stay strong. You gotta look at the other angles in life. You know, how can not that bad? If there's bad, there's a good behind it. You know, you gotta look at that yin and yang effect. You know what I mean? You, I, that's mm-hmm. the only way I can explain it. You know. Uh, when there's bad, they're also good. So when that happened to me, I gotta say, I, I thought, what what came good out of it? You know, now when I do tournament now, I do it for my family. I, before I do tournament, uh, like this past one, 2016, this past, I just came back from Malaga, uh, Spain, uh, for Team USA, I won the two golds again, I defend it, but that time it was, now it's a different reason. I did it for my family, not try to praise somebody and get acceptance, you know. Before, when I look at all of the grand champion, you know, the, the cups and everything, because I like the cup, the cup I think is nice, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I look at the cup, I look at the medal, I see the reflection, not me before. 
I wanted to see like my dad, because that's how much bad I wanna, I want, I wanted that, uh, that acceptance. Like you're okay, you number one, you okay. But now, when I look at the cup now, I see my family, I see my son, I see. Uh, Everybody support me. That's how come when I go to a tournament, I don't go to every single one. If I go tournament and I go in that square, it's for a purpose, you know? So like a lot of people, they are the, I'm not the type that when the, all of the uh, judges, they say eye candy, you know what I mean? Oh, good technique, good punch. No. On me, I'm different. I don't want them to see. I want them to feel who I am when I'm in that square. You know, who, who's, who's Jose? I show them who's Jose. I give them a part of me. I, when I do my kata, I let them uh, go to a journey with me. Every step they feel. And every step I do, every move I do, it's not only for me. It's, it's for my family. It's for my student. They're the one that makes me. That's why when I, when I do tournament and then when I uh, uh, perform, I want the judges to see that. You know, instead of seeing uh, who I am, I want them to feel, know who I am. Yeah. And anyone that has seen you perform certainly knows that you do that. I mean, it's, I don't know that everyone's had the opportunity to experience someone perform a kata, pumse, tol, routine, pattern, you know, the, the multitude of names that we call them in the martial arts. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that everyone's seen someone bear their soul through that performance. I've been fortunate enough to see you do it. I've seen a few others do it. I've tried to do it. But when you see it, it's something that's incredibly powerful. And I, I think that anyone that argues against the training of forms, of kata, whatever you call it, hasn't seen someone do it the way you do it. Because it's one of the most transformational things that I know of within the martial arts. You, you, you know what? Um, when I was, uh, you know, growing up in, 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 in training, uh, you know, they got some people that they love doing kumite. And then they got love people. They got people that love doing kata, you know. I tell them, uh, whether you like kumite or kata, the intention got to be the same. You cannot separate kata and the kumite because kata, what you see there, the block, the punch, the, the kick, the timing, the distance, the balance, the focus, the concentration. In kumite, what you see, same thing. Yeah. So the intention got to be the same. You cannot try to say, oh, Kata, one thing. Kumite, another thing. Uh, that means you're making the intention different. You, you're going you're gonna to mess yourself up like that. The intention's the same. You're doing kata for kumite. You're doing kumite for the kata. And you bind that together with good kihon, good basics. Yeah, Totally. Yeah, so I knew there was a reason I liked you. We we have we have similar <laughs> philosophies. Uh, no, you know what? It's it's like you know, uh, some people they they learn the easy way. Some people they they learn the the hard way. And sometimes the hard way is 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 good. You know, I learned the I learned the the hard way um, because maybe maybe I'm hard head. That's why I don't know, but. I guess 
you know, it's, it, it, it helped me. It, it helped me to understand more. Sure. Who, other than, than your initial instructor, because clearly that was a, a wonderful relationship and someone who set you on such a good path. And then let's also take your father out because we've heard about him and the impact that he had on your martial arts, your life. If we take those two people out, who has been the most influential on your martial arts? Uh, aside my instructor. Yeah, your original instructor. Uh, I tell you what. Um, Fumia Demura. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Because uh, just the way his, what he thinks about karate, martial art, is like what's in his mind, how he views it. Uh, I can relate. I really can relate. And, you know, right now, I may be wrong, but he's, you know, he's one of the one that's still living that oh, I really admire. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And, and you know, we talked... This past weekend, when I had the chance to see you, we we talked about the interview that that I got to do with Demara Sensei. And uh, for anyone that maybe hasn't heard that, uh, it was just a few episodes ago, episode one thirty, if I'm remembering correctly. And I got the chance to chat with him for a half hour, and it was a very powerful episode, and one that I like ever check out. You, you heard it, if I recall, when we yeah, talked. About I, it. Yeah, I yeah, it's. Um, they don't make him make them like him anymore. I think is a good way to say it. How were you first exposed to him? Was it through his books? Uh, I saw him in the I saw him in a, a TV. Mm. I saw him in TV, and um, I saw how his move first. Of course, the way he moved. And then later on, when I was getting more mature in, in martial art, then his philosophy, the way he thinks, that's the one kept me going. So, yeah. Now more of, um, I would love to pick his brain and see, uh, like, you know, what's, uh, the interview really helped, you know, get to know him more, but like more of like, uh, I guess about karate. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, he's one. One is, is there somebody else you want to mention? Um, but they're past, they're dead already. That's, so, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you can still yeah, honor um, them. I would, I would, I would love to, um, no, Tsuka Sensei, my instructor's uh, teacher, mm -hmm. the founder of Wadaru. Because for me, like uh, my instructor is like that, the way he acts, the way he, his philosophy, the way he thinks. I want to see uh, the person that helped mold him. I want to see his uh, thinking. I want to know his thinking. So, you know, um, oh, that person's good. Oh, I want to meet his instructor. How come he end up like, you know, mm. uh, I really want to get to the, like, you know, like the core. Like if that person is good, I want to go meet the parents, you know, um, I'm like that. Sure. You know? Sure. It comes from somewhere. Yeah. And learning those lessons from the, from the teachers themselves. Can yeah. Be really valuable. So let's talk I about. Mean, oh, please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I mean, and for uh, sh sh uh, for Kumite, I would go to you know I want to pick a brain on a uh, you know Naka Sensei. Mm. Yeah, or uh, Yoshimi Sensei. He's a, a 
the one who um, uh, teach Rika Usami mm -hmm. and uh, Antonio Diaz, his instructor. Yeah, for Kata, I want to pick on him. Yeah, and Nishimura uh, for Wadaru. Uh, Nishimura Sensei for uh, Wadaru for Kumite. So, yeah, there's like five actually right there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but for specific, yeah, for kata, for kumite, yeah. you know, for, you know, but yeah, so I'm, I'm very curious, you know, uh, and just, and just hanging around with them, not only doing uh, karate, just what's in their mind, because for me, of course, the mind, the, you move the body, you know, uh, your intention, because if I know what's in their mind, I know uh, how, what's the intention going to be, you know? So, um, yeah, so more, more than karate, I would want to know, yeah, mm. from them, because. Sure. Through all of our conversations, and I love when this happens, through our stories here, you've answered some of the questions that I was going to ask, right? And, and listeners know what those questions are, so we, we, won't, we won't hang out and, and pick on them and ask you to answer them again. We'll just move forward. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about movies. A little bit lighter subject, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, movie, yeah. <laughs> are, are, you, are you into martial arts films? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would have expected so. Um, yeah. Do you, do you have any favorites? I tell you what, um, uh, you're not gonna be surprised. I like, I like um, real kind. You know what I mean? More short movie like, um, like the real Miyagi. Mm. I like that one. Um, and uh, Empty Hand, the real Karate Kids. Uh, that one is, um, you know, about um, kids going to tournaments. And uh, for AEU, mm -hmm. I think the, the Federation is a, yeah, and it shows them uh, it, like how they train, uh, the lifestyles of going, you know, traveling, going to tournaments. So I like those type of um, films because it's real, it's raw, you know, uh, you can relate more. Sure. Sure. I haven't seen the real Karate Kids. I've, I've seen advertisements for it. And it's on the very, very long list of martial arts movies that I want to see, uh, as as you as listeners might imagine. When I talk to someone, there's usually one or two movies I haven't seen that have to go on the list. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have as much time to watch movies as uh, some people might imagine. It's, I, I'm lucky if I can get to one a week. <laughs> so it, the list just keeps growing. But you know, now that you've mentioned that, I, I think I'm going to bump it up in the list. So yeah, if you prefer the reality, you know, documentary kind of movies, are there actors that at all resonate for you? For actors, um, growing up, you know, uh, when I was like, you know, kid kind, elementary kind age, of course, Bruce Lee, you know, um, because the way. For me, it's like, dude is fast. You know, he was fast. You know, but for uh, when I started growing up, you know, uh, I like uh, Naka Sensei. Um, because he's a, a karate cop practitioner. Uh, he studied Shotokan, and then he went to movies. So um, I, I like that. I like, okay, you're going to make a karate movie. You get real karate people. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It comes through much better, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about books? Any martial arts books that have had an impact on you? Um, you know what? I tell you, I'm not much of a reader, but I read this book. Um, uh, it's called Key 
in daily life. And it's just, it just teaches you um, about key. Because when I was um, in Hawaii, when I was growing up, and, um, and, I, always, and I always hang out in the Humbu Dojo, the, the headquarters uh, dojo, uh, once a week, my instructors, uh, we all get all the seniors, you know, the senior people, and we all teach them uh, uh, breathing exercises, hmm. you know, to, to get them. And it was, it was for free. You know, it's, it's the dojo giving back to the community. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I got so curious about um, key, uh, how we can produce energy. It's not, no, don't get me wrong, not the one that you see in a movie, like, you know, they make their hand in front of the person like 10 feet away and they blow them away. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Not that one. Okay. Not that one. This is, you know, uh, how to pre- uh, breathing exercise because key is energy is breathing. Uh, we, um, we, we teach them that and we teach them uh, uh, movements. Uh, to make themselves healthy, and I didn't know that uh, you know with key you got you, it's what you eat too, like you know healthy kind of food. They got the uh, they got that yin and yang kind of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, um, so so that book I read, um, and it helped me because back then, um, you know, everybody after we teach all the all the seniors, uh, my instructor go. What you ate today? Then what? You, how about you? What you ate today? And look at my helpers. Then they go to me. Uh, my instructor, uh, he he always called me a monkey because I fool around a lot. <laughs> hey monkey, what you eat today? Uh, and then I look at them. I eat Burger King. Oh, I got busted. You know, <laughs> that's not good. You know, I eat Burger King. So, it, you know, he does help. That's why. Um, when you do your kata, especially pumse, when you do your kata, it, you have to inhale. You have to get that energy. Where you get that energy through ki, through breathing. You know, uh, it, it's gonna come out more uh, more powerful. I tell you. So the smart practitioner, here's the one I talk about again from cross training. Ki. If you if you train in key, and then you do your martial art, oh, you you're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna find more powerful. Yeah, yeah, and there are so many ways to interact with key or chi or, you know, I'm sure there's yeah, I, I'm plenty of other you, names yeah. for it. But yeah, I'm telling you, it, it's it's a part of the martial arts that I think a lot of us don't get to experience. I mean, I was fortunate that my original instructors were were big on conveying those messages. And so whether it's through that book or or taking a Tai Chi class or, or, or something to develop that internal component of the martial arts, I, I hope everyone would consider uh, diversifying their training in that way. And of course, well, we'll, we'll Mention that book and everything else that we've talked about mm-hmm. for anybody that might be new to the show over at the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is where you can find all of those. Mm-hmm. Because for me, um, in order to learn hard technique, you got to learn soft. And you know what? Because if you say you know hard, you have nothing to compare it to. And if you say you know soft, but you never train hard. You don't have you don't have nothing to compare to. That's why you have to do in order to know hard. You gotta know soft. Right. So that's why they have hard key, which is you know your karate ah ah, and you have soft key. You know that soft kind of breathing. You know you 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 have to. Yeah, yeah. That contrast is important. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about goals. I mean, you're still training, you're still 
competing, you know, clearly you are still passionate. You're still fired up about martial arts. Are there I'm, things that you're... Last year, a few last year. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is it you're, you're fired up about? Are you working towards things? I mean, what, what are your goals? I, I, I tell you what, for now, yeah, for now, um, I want people to know the difference between, um, uh, you know, what, what, what's traditional karate all about. Because there's so much style out there and people get confused. You know what I mean? Because uh, some people over here, I know, like, you know, uh, you know, Karate, Taekwondo, Kung Fu, they're all the same, right? They're all karate, right? And, you know, I want them to know the difference. Um, because, um, you know, it's bad for the whole, st- the whole style. Because, you know, it's almost like, you know, like I tell people um, when they eat Asian food, what's the first thing they're going to think of? Oh, that's Chinese food, Right. They got so much type of Asian food. They got Korean, they got Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, you know, Thai. Same thing like karate. You know, it's so many different varieties. You see, you're still going to get satisfied, I tell you. But there's a difference. There's a difference. You know, uh, so that's what I want to, um, uh, my goal is to educate, you know, the difference. Uh, uh, what karate is is uh, different. How come it's different? Uh, I also my goal is also to, uh, of course, to uh, defend my title in Ireland next year, and hopefully um, to build a uh, Team USA. Hmm. Yeah, I want to try that. Cool. I want to see myself. Uh, how how. I know myself as an instructor, but how about as a coach? Oh, you know what I mean. That's a good goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, because that's why I entered to to, um, you know, my brother he joined the military to um, to give back to the country. You know, I I wanted to like give back. You know, um, you know, because America did, when we came here, um, you know, it it did. I learned a lot of things here, and I just want to uh, say uh, give thanks back. I didn't know how my my brother joined. What I gonna do? So I I got this opportunity to represent uh, Team USA. So I so I did. Good. So I gotta give back. So uh, I'm glad I I gave something back. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm glad that you did. Thank you for, for winning us a medal. <laughs> yeah. Or or is it a cup? Yeah. Is it a cup or a medal? Oh, oh a medal, yeah. I was I was hoping for a cup. Yeah, I like the cup. <laughs> Completely unrelated at the event this weekend. I don't know if you heard some of the kids. Uh some for, for those of you that which is actually the majority of you listening are not in New England, there there was a competition this weekend and some of the grand championships were cups and the kids that won them were talking about what candy they were going to put in them from their Halloween trick or treating to eat out of the cup. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I can relate to that. You know, my first cup, you know what I did? I what? put, um, I, I put, uh, what do you call that? I put apple cider. <laughs> you drank out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I saw that in the, in the TV, you know, Oh wow. Wow. Look, so I, w- I wanted to know how the feeling was. You know, it's pretty good feeling. Yeah. You know, you, you want something you work hard for and then you, you do that. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So if there's anyone listening that wants to get a hold of you, maybe they, they're, they're traveling through New Hampshire and they, they want to drop by and train or, you know, follow you through your competitions, you know, over the next couple of years. How would they get a hold of you? Yeah, okay. I'm the chief instructor at House of the Samurai. Uh, and they can follow me in facebook.com, Dimakali Jose. And then they can uh, reach me through there. 
I'm just jotting that down. We'll make sure that we get those in the show notes. So if people want to follow you, and I hope that they do, and hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to see more of you and, and maybe put some photo and video of you, photo and video of you out there for our listeners, because actually, yeah, hopefully we, we can, do you have, there's video of your kata in Spain, right? Uh I gotta see. I gotta see who okay. um, uh, who made it because um, uh, my wife, she entered too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because usually she she filmed me, yeah, but now she couldn't because uh, she she got um, she ended up uh, competing as well. Um, I kind of tricked her into it. That's why <laughs> you tricked. Her. How did you trick yeah, her into yeah. competing? No, because one person got. Uh, couldn't make it and they needed a female to represent and i said you i said you want to go spain she goes, yeah yeah i like go spain uh, okay <laughs> you you gotta enter <laughs> so, <laughs> you know and I, I i want her to um you know work for something too i, I want to see her stay healthy and you know reach for goal too and you know what i mean and yeah. And, you know, you always have that thing like, you know, oh, what if I don't win, you know, when I come back to the States? I'm not only going to uh, look down, uh, people going to say, oh, what happened? You never placed your, your, your friends, your, your students in the country. Like, I said, don't think of that. I said, that's the one thing you should use that as motivation. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you, see, you see that? Yeah, you, that's your motivation. Don't, there's the yin and yang. Now that she was looking at negative, you, you got to look at the positive, you know. That's your motivation. Don't think of that. That's the people that going to put you down. No. All right. Just before we end, do you have any advice for the people that are listening? Oh, yeah. I, uh, Let's see, I got, I give two advice. Uh, the first one is uh, when training in karate, uh, I end up learning, okay? There's no such thing as advanced, no. No, there's no such thing as advanced. Uh, I believe there's such thing as a, uh, advanced is really good, strong basics. If uh, they don't know what I'm trying to say is you get a person, a white belt or yellow belt person, do the same thing as a black belt person. Same thing, but look different. You know what I mean? There's your advance. Like a jump kick, Toby Getty. Uh, what's the kick on that? Front kick. What's the advance on that? Just the jump. They added the jump. There's your advance. So for me, there's no such thing as advance. Advance is very, very strong, good, clean basics. That's your advance. Mm. And for the future champions, like uh, people that likes going tournament, uh, I want to tell them, um, no one born to be champion. Champions, they're made. You know, they, for, by hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and uh, your support from family, friends, and your dojo mate, and your sensei. That's what makes champion. They, you're not born champion. You got to work for the champion. I've always found Kyoshi to be a powerful person in and out of the competition ring. And now we can see that he's powerful in his life. Thank you, Kyoshi Dimakali, for coming on the show. Over at WhistleKickMartialArtsRadio.com, you can find the show notes, including links to everything we discussed, as well as a number of videos. One of Riku Usami performing her kata, well, one of her katas, at a world championship, and a couple videos of Kyoshi. There's one of him doing open hand and one doing weapons. There's also a place to sign up for the newsletter, and you should do that if you haven't done it already. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. The username is Whistlekick. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes of the show, check out our not-quite-secret Facebook group, 
Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. We're always open to new guests for the show, as well as feedback. So head on over to the website, and you can suggest someone as a guest, yourself, your instructor, somebody that you've heard of, somebody that you follow on social media, as well as leave us some feedback for a topic for a Thursday show, or just tell us you love what we're doing. If you like the show, make sure you're subscribing so you never miss one of our bi-weekly episodes. You know, we're always asking for reviews because they help spread the word of the show and push us up in the rankings, and that helps new people find the show, and it keeps that cycle going. If you like what we're doing on Martial Arts Radio, this is the best way for you to help. Remember the products you can find at whistlekick.com, like our hoodies, and if you're a school owner or team coach, remember wholesale.whistlekick.com. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.